guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be on the Colored Pencil Magazine May Challenge. Um, before I get too into it, if you guys can just let me know that you can see and hear everything all good. So you guys would be seeing what I see on my screen. <laughs> hey guys, so many of you on here, 49 people, that's pretty insane. And we only just started. A few of you have been waiting, but thank you for being on here. So Color Pencil Magazine, Sally is on the chat. So if you have any questions about the magazine, feel free to ask her. And um, yeah, so I'm assuming everything is all good. Because usually I get a message pretty quick if it's not. Alrighty, cool. So if you guys look at the description of the video that you guys are watching now, you can click on the colorpencilmag.com slash challenge and that is going to take you to this page over here. So <laughs> it's pretty insane seeing that big banner over there. <laughs> but okay, so today's challenge is the, the May challenge or this month's challenge is the May challenge. So just click open and then you will be able to download the image from there. So just go download full size image and then um, if you do that, you can decide on what size you want to download it to. Oh, it's my grandfather's birthday today. <laughs> um, okay, so that is it. And then also in the description, you will see the supplies that I'm using today and um, the list, the link to the Color Pencil Magazine um, playlist, just the, the monthly demos that I do. And that's it. So pretty much what this video is about, it is just, where is it? It's just me doing the challenge every month. So if you guys get the magazine, so I don't have this month's magazine yet. Usually I get it like two or three days after I do the live stream. But what generally happens is you get the magazine and right at the back is the monthly challenge. So this was last month's challenge over here. And um, it was the chicks and I'll be honest, <laughs> and it's a bit embarrassing to say, but I still haven't finished mine. I started it on the beginning of April and I still haven't finished it. So here, here are my little, my chicks, my chick, only one. I still got to do the other one. And then, um, so that was in this magazine. And then the one before that was the uh, tennis shoes. So that was that challenge and that was the one that I did for well, that one. Huh. And that one was the month before. So yeah, so if you guys want to know more about it, if you guys get the magazine, just follow the instructions over here. Otherwise, you can see all the instructions on their website. So um, I just do these for fun. Like there's no particular reason. It's more so that I have the opportunity to show you guys um, a few things, so how to draw or how I would approach something. And this time I'm going to be using watercolor pencils. So I don't use the watercolor pencils too often, but the little bit that I got to play with these pencils, I really, really, really loved using them. So I thought that a water lily would be the perfect drawing to do using watercolor pencils. So the pencils that I'm using are my Albright, my Faber Castell, poly, not Polychromos, my Faber Castell. Albre Dura watercolor pencils. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I, something like that. So they watercolor pencils. Now they are, they they do have a hexagon casing, and they're quite thick. So I do find that they do not fit in my school smart electric sharpener, which sort of sucks. But they, um, it does. I'm just gonna hand sharpen it with one of those. Stettler sharpeners and we're good to go. So they're very strong pencils. I don't find that I have any trouble with them when I do sharpen them manually. Um, so yeah. Are you guys experiencing a bit of lag? Is it jumping a lot? If it is, let me know and I'll probably go tell Vinny that he can't play games while I stream. <laughs> okay. Just let me know. Oh, and if you guys have a question, if you guys can tag me in it so that I can see it clearly. So, um, 
Or if you don't know how to tag, if you can just write your question in capital letters, then that would be great. Okay, it's jumping. All right, I'm going to tell Vinny. Give me a second. I'll be right back. I'm just going to tell Vinny that he's going to have to get offline for a little bit. <laughs> He'll finish his game quickly and then he will see if it does anything. Okie dokie. So those are the pencils that I'm using. And then I've got these little brushes. So they are Robert A. Wade Neef 970 Taclon Round Watercolor Brushes. So these are a bit fancy, but you do not have to get fancy brushes. And I don't know how much I'd use these. Actually, I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use more. If I'm going to use these, or I have these um, Arteza watercolor brush pens um, in all its sizes. So I'm not sure which ones I'll use more. I guess we'll experiment and see, see how it goes. Yep, so hopefully the jumping, we'll see how many goes. Like, he reckons it's not the game that it is the internet. So let's hope it all goes well. Radio. So this is the way the lighting is right now. I cannot get the lighting any better. better. And I have noticed that when I try and change the lighting um, in OBS, the color is way off. So this is just how it's going to have to be. Radio. Okay, so with the water lilies, I'm just going to freehand them. So where's my reference? Put it up here so I can see. So there's so many ways that you can get your reference onto your drawing paper. So um, you can trace it, you can use a grid, you can transfer it which is tracing, um, or you can freehand. Now with this one, I think it's, it's pretty simple. So what I want to do is I want to create, so <laughs> I've never finished a color pencil magazine drawing in one stream. And I'm thinking I'm still going too big. So I'm going to just use my masking tape to create a small area. Just a small one. And if I don't create a border, I know I'll go too big. So I create a small drawing. And I still doubt I'd get it done in one stream, but we're going to try. We shall try. Oh, um, the paper I'm using is... It's a pretty wide one. Needs to be wider. The paper I'm using is the Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed 200 GSM watercolor paper. So this is the paper I'm using. Cool. That will do. So we'll go for this size and see how we go. Let's zoom in. Uh, 
Camel Kern is asking, have I had any of the problems with the Fabriano that Lisa has reported? Um, no. So when Lisa and I did our um, live Q&A like, session together, she was telling me that she, she doesn't like the, the, late, the newer papers of the Fabriano. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, it, she hasn't had that much of a great experience with the paper, but I haven't had any issues. So f I, I'm pretty happy with it. But then I've, I've, it's been the same for me since I started using them. I don't think, I don't know. I don't notice a difference from when I started using them. I don't know if she used them before I started using the paper, but... No, I haven't had any problems with it. I like it very much. So, okay, so I'm just using a light cobalt turquoise number 154 and I'm just gonna sketch a light outline out. Um, of the, I don't even know what you call them. What do you call the leaves in the water? Just water lily leaves? <laughs> uh, Yells is asking, is tracing cheating? No, tracing is not cheating. Tracing is a technique used by artists to save time and to practice the outlines. So, um, Something that Lisa will tell you guys as well is that tracing helps you guys learn the true outline of something. So if you, for example, had to take an eye and trace an eye five times and then do it freehand, do the freehand outline, you're more likely to get a more accurate freehand outline that way than when you just jump in and do the freehand outline. So because you've practiced the tracing, you've sort of um, given your brain the opportunity to feel what the true lines are, what the outlines are, and how to observe as well. So you start learning where to look um, and you actually learn more from tracing than what you do if you don't. So you're going to get more accurate freehand outlines if you trace more and then freehand. And then once you sort of have the right observation, the right way of observing your reference and things like that, you'll pick up on doing, pick up on true lines from like muscle memory <laughs> more accurately than what you would if, um, I can't find my words today, than what you would if you didn't trace. Lily pads, <laughs> thank you, it's so lily pads. Okay, the internet's pretty crappy. Um, what color? Okay, pick a color. So for the water lily, I'm just gonna... So the water lily is very light. I think I'll, I'll still stick to the same blue just for the outer part of the water lily but for the inside let's use the light yellow ochre number 183 and i am so not fussed about getting this a hundred percent right As long as it looks like a water lily in the end, I will be happy. So it looks very light and dull at the moment, but that's because it is. So just wait until I've got the outline done and then you guys will be able to see a bit more. Okay, that's fine. That's the center. Okay, let's start focusing on the, the petals, petals, in which case I want to use a very, very light color. I 
I think I'll actually use some of the light flesh number 132. Mm, it's actually a very nice color. Now, if you want to get accurate colors, there's this really cool app for iPhone, not for Android, unfortunately, called Arty. Now, the beauty about the Faber-Castell pencils, they're polychromous pencils and their watercolor pencils are all the same colors. So um, if you look, if you're trying to look for a color in the Arty app and you select the polychromos pencil set, you can find the colors and you can still substitute the color that you find for the watercolor pencils because they're the same colors. So that's pretty cool. So I'll see, I'll show you guys the app when I start adding color. Uh, Bailey is asking, did you sketch in pencil first or are you living life on the edge here? <laughs> what do you usually do? Um, no, so I'm just using the actual pencils that I'm going to use to color it in. I'm using to create the, to freehand the outline. Um, and it depends. If the subject matter is very detailed and there's a lot of outlines, then I tend to just trace it because I couldn't be bothered trying to freehand too much detail but if it's a very simple image like this then I'll, I'm more than likely to just sketch it out like this so the complicated part about this drawing is not so much the outline or the drawing but it's the colors so because you've got petals that are sort of like translucent kind of you can see color coming through because of the water you can see the light reflecting on the water so you've got very dark color right next to very light blue sort of highlights on the water Okay, <laughs> I need more space. That was a very dodgy laugh I just had there. Okay, actually, it's just gonna have to go over the edge like that. here so when you just work from the center outwards then it's easy to find each pe pedal so you just and then you just focus on one pedal at a time so drawing flowers are fun because for that reason I drew those way too close, so I draw my water lily way too big, and that's fine. So my border just became bigger. <laughs> uh, let's find that side. 
Okay, so that water lily, uh, was it lily pad? Is only gonna start over here instead. Mm, probably even over here. There we go. So that gives a bit more space there. And then take the bottom one off. Um, so I saw an earlier comment about masking tape. So I use this masking tape. I have the blue one, but I'm a bit afraid of the blue one. So the blue one does adhere better to, to the, the paper and keeps it flat. But I find that I have to really remove the blue one so carefully because it does rip the paper. It has ripped my paper before. But this masking tape is so low tack that if I had to leave this till tomorrow on this drawing, it would have started folding off already on its own. So it's, I never have any issues with this masking tape, which is just regular masking tape. Okay, cool. So that's that, nothing fancy. So this is normal. You, the, the beginning stages of your drawing are gonna look pretty bad before they start looking any good. So now I'm gonna take my dark indigo and I'm just gonna sort of sketch out those really dark shapes in the water. So make sure that, so when you're looking at your reference, so like here, so I'm taking the indigo blue now and I want to sort of outline this very dark shape here and just put an indication of where these dark shadows are under the lily pad and under the water lily. So that's what I'm doing with the indigo blue. Castell, hello! That's insane! <laughs> cool! Okay, so the indigo blue. I'm just... focusing on the shadow areas. So, just under this petal. Now, if you... It's so cool if you can just get your values right but you cannot get details right <laughs> it's fine like i find that if you can get the values of a drawing right um first your drawing is going to look much more appealing to the eye than what it would if you can do detailing but you struggle with your values So now the confusing part about the shadow on the flower is you see the shadow of these top petals reflecting in the water and it's also creating a shadow on top of the bottom petals. So drawing that might be a little bit confusing but draw what you see and if you, if you find that you are, are struggling because your brain's sort of confusing you with the details that you're seeing then that's a good time to put your drawing upside down or you know focus on just a small little part by cutting out a square out of a piece of paper um, and just focusing on that one section so that you don't confuse yourself because your brain almost wants you to draw something that it thinks is right but then in the end you're like oh no that looks completely wrong Come on, focus. Yeah. Charles is asking, do you find it easier to use watercolor pencils instead of the watercolor tube paints? I do, only because I am a colored pencil artist. So I, I don't paint much. I don't have very much experience in painting and I I don't like painting as much as what I do like drawing and coloring in with the pencil. So for me, yes, I prefer the pencils to the paint. And 
And thanks, Charles. The way you set out that question is beautiful. If, if other people can ask me a question that way, it makes it so much easier for me to see. Um, because I, I don't have time to sift through each comment. So if you have a question directly for me, then please do it like that. Capital letters and tag me in there. I'll see it straight away. Uh, and the music I'm playing is by Epidemic Sound and I just pick the jazz soundtracks and that's what you guys can hear in the background. I love it, it's so relaxing. And it's royalty free music so I don't have to worry about what music I'm playing while I'm streaming. Because I don't like to stream when it's so quiet. I like some sort of noise. Okay. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to just shade in all those dark blue areas with the indigo blue. And usually when I'm coloring in big sections, I do use circular motions because I don't want to leave pencil strokes. So when I color like this, the circular motions, let me zoom in some more. Uh, Joanna's asking, have you tried the Intense Blocks? I just got them on sale from Amazon. I'm not really sure how I'm feeling about them. No, I have not. I have not. Lisa obviously has, so uh, she's got some pretty insane videos with them. So if you want to know more about it, then probably check out Lisa's channel. Uh, Judy's saying, how do you avoid the pencil marks once you add water? I struggle with that. Uh, yes, so adding water... Uh, okay, so the pencil marks. So this is very important. These, these small circular strokes so that you don't create those very dominant pencil lines. You sort of have to do that with watercolor pencils. So even though you're going to be applying water, if you create a very solid, strong line, um, it's... No, there should still be volume. If you create a solid strong line, even if you apply water over the top, you'll probably still see that line. So you want to, and if you're worried about applying too much pressure, so like here I'm holding the back of my pencil so that I am only using the weight of the pencil to put color down and I don't overdo the pressure because I know that a lot of you guys are so heavy handed and you press too hard and you don't have to. The key to pencil layering is gradually layering um, light layers. You don't want to destroy the tooth of your paper and you want to build up as much color and depth as you can. So you want to avoid using too much pressure. That is if you want to apply a lot of layers. I, there's a lot of artists out there that really love to burnish. I don't like burnishing. Um, Probably the reason I stopped burnishing because I did try it in the beginning was mainly because I didn't like how much pressure I needed to use and it was killing my wrists. So I had I, I never got to the point where I used burnishing enough to develop the skill properly. So I much prefer just using la light layers like this and it doesn't hurt my wrist in any way because I'm not using any extensive pressure. But if you are using the burnishing technique and you don't mind you know, applying pressure to your drawings, you are going to be very limited to your layers. So just keep that in mind. And then for you guys that really want to learn how to draw, um, I, I just started a new curriculum on my uh, website a few days ago, and I'm literally breaking everything down. We're going through every single drawing paper type. We're going through the drawing pencil types, what they're made of, 
what the consistency of the oil and the wax is, what does it mean to have a wax-based, oil-based pencil, um, all those sorts of things, other additional drawing supplies that you might be using in the drawing um, techniques. And then we're going to do breakdowns of everything. We're going to break down the anatomy of animals, and then we're going to do different kinds of furs and do like literally each part of the animal. And then in the end, we'll do a complete drawing of a cat, a complete drawing of a horse, a reptile, and a bird. And then we'll do human studies, same thing. And then landscapes, botanicals, and still life. So that's all coming up, like starting now. And that's what I'm gonna be doing for over the course of the year. So that the plan is that next year when I start doing advanced drawings, I can refer my students back to those videos um, so if, if someone's having trouble with saying they don't know how to use their solvent properly or they just can't get the blending technique right, I've got a resource to send them back to um, because I find that with a lot of my live streams, I'm very much on repeat mode, which I don't mind, but it is nice to have something thorough to look at and have like an extensive resource available to you whenever you need it. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. So that's, yeah, so that's for the beginner artists that just want to learn everything from scratch. You want to have a platform of how to start. You don't know where to start, um, but you want to learn how to do realistic pencil drawings, then, um, and you've got some time, then I'd honestly advise you to do that. It's only an $8 subscription a month, which is not much, and you can cancel any time. So there was my little self-promotion, I guess. <laughs> um, okay. So let's put in some green. So now I just want to fill in the base colors. I just want to get base colors in so I can put a layer of water down and show you guys what to do with the water. Oh, and I didn't quite finish the answer to the question that um, about the pencil strokes and the water. It's um, something that's going to take practice because you have to, you, the, the consistency of water that you have on your brush also makes a difference. So too much water, too little water, how it's going to move the color around on the paper. Um, those things all play a role in drawing with watercolor pencils. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that. But also when I get to that part in my curriculum, when I go over watercolor pencils, um, I will show all that stuff in a lot of extensive detail. Which is obviously not something you can cover in one live stream. But you guys are answering, uh, asking some pretty great questions. So that's good. So Judy, Judy is saying, thank you. I do tend to be heavy handed and wasn't trying the circular motions for the H2O pencils. Cool. Uh, Crystal saying, is the student membership on your site absolute beginners? I would love to learn, but don't have much experience. Uh, Crystal, well, that's what I, yeah, I just spoke about that now. So the, the new curriculum that I'm starting is for absolute beginning, beginners. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sally. So the, this image is copyright free. Sally actually took this photo. So um, Sally is the creator of the Color Pencil magazine. And would she say, if you enter your drawing, you can qualify to win some of the $300 in prizes. Um, and yes, the drawing must at least be 80% color pencils. So the link is in the description if you guys want to find out more. But I do encourage you to enter your drawings as well. Um, because you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> Iggy's asking, have I ever drawn a colored picture of a colored pencil? <laughs> no, I haven't. That would be a good one. Okay, so I am using pine green number 267 and I'm just going to color this whole thing in. So now the only thing about doing a live stream is I can't turn my drawing around. 
So if I don't have my cameras and that set up, usually the way I draw is I, I have it on a board and I can just draw, turn my drawing around instead of trying to turn myself around. Uh, oh, Joanna's asking if the student membership on my website is separate from Patreon and no, it's, it's not. So Patreon is a separate platform, but you still get access to the student portal on my website if you become a patron. So same, exact same um, rewards. Ladies, asking Color Pencil Magazine how much they can alter the image. You can alter as much as you can, as long as they can see that in the end, that is the reference that you use. We actually encourage you to be really creative with the reference photos. Add something in there, take something away, make it look a bit different. Um, do that, it'd be great. Okay, I'm just going to keep drawing for a bit and then I'll come back to, to reading your questions. So I need a different green for that one. I think what I'll use is this green. So permanent green olive number 167. I really want to get color down so I can show you guys how bright it's going to get because it, it looks so dull and boring right now. And Judy saying, I gather that you'll talk about this later, but do you layer color before water or do you glaze as in regular H2O painting? Well, I don't really know how to do a regular watercolor painting, <laughs> so I don't know what the sort of steps are for that, but I do, I layer, ideally I want to layer about three or four or even five layers like this on top of each other before applying water. But um, for the sake of the live stream and because of lack of time, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to have one layer down. But you can layer like that or you can layer a little bit, add the, the water and then layer some more, add the water, layer some more. It's, it's really up to you. See, this area here is a lighter blue, so do not go too dark there. So it would be so easy to go really dark there. So let's just add this color mix with some indigo blue. So sky blue number 146. I'm just going to block in everywhere else. I'm so not worried about detail right now. It's all about value and just getting your base colors down. So every drawing, especially my drawings, go through an ugly phase before they start looking better. And that's to be expected. So because I'm in a little bit of a rush, you can probably see some of my pencil strokes, but none of them are very hard. So I'll probably get away with mixing, uh, making those pencil strokes fairly smooth with water. Okay, indigo blue, just for these shadows over here. It's a bit of a confusing 
shadow just there. Sky Bear. Alrighty, so let's add some water. I might use a brush pen. So let's use this one. So that's gonna make it, this is just one layer. So this is not how I'd, I'd usually do it. I prefer to have multiple layers of pencil down first. Cause there's a lot of different colors in the lily pad. There's a lot of different green values, some indigo blue, um, maybe even some yellow. So that you won't see that now because I just put one color. So it's just blocking in one color. So I'm using circular motions and that seems to work with not creating strokes. Although it creates slight little textures, but that's okay. We still got a lot of layers to put down. See, once you add the water, I don't think you're going to be able to tell that we even use pencils. So you really do get a really great watercolor effect with the pencils, if that's what you're looking for. One thing I've found is that you don't want to sort of go halfway like that and let th leave that to dry for long because it dries pretty quick and see it leaves that shadow there so you sort of have to work it as smooth as you can as quick as you can So yeah, like I said, this is really great if you want to get that watercolor effect, but if you don't want to get that watercolor effect, then um, you'd use very, very little water. I've had me, I've actually been asked the question a few times, like why use oil and wax based pencils with solvent if you could just use watercolor pencils with water? And that is because you don't have that much control with water as what you do with solvent. So like these these 
sort of shadowed areas that you see in there from the water if you use solvent and oil or wax based pencils like your faber castell polychromos pencils for instance you won't get those strokes so and but that could also be because maybe i don't have that control with water yet but like I find it very, very hard to not have those strokes with the watercolor pencils. So it's just one of those things. But if you want a watercolor effect, I think it's great. so that that was just like one layer so imagine how nice it would look if we actually had all those colors in there before we applied the water um let's do the center real quick actually i need some okay. check is good yeah please i don't want a button that shocks me <laughs> okay cool so those other questions i sort of answered them already so that's good uh cheryl asked you have to be in the states to enter this competition no nope. you can be anywhere because you, you're not entering your actual physical drawing. You're just entering a picture of your drawing. Um, okay, so I'm using Cadmium Yellow, number 107. Oh, let me show you something real quick, which I think a lot of you guys will find super handy. So just for example, I've got this little reference here of the water lily. And there's this app and uh, called Arty. So this app's called Arty. So let's go image. So I need to f get this image on here, which I don't have on here. Okay, I only have the thumbnail on here, but that's fine. I can still show you what I'm trying to show you. So. Okay, so choose an image. Okay, pick that one. Um, and then go colors. So you pick your pencils here so if you go like i clicked on polychromo so yeah you got polychromo so they got faber castell polychromos prisma color premiere and the karen dash luminance pencils so the polychromos pencils and the albert draw watercolor pencils have the same colors in them so you can use your polychromos pencils to find your colors that you want in the watercolor set so let's say i want to find a green on here um, so it'll be earth green yellowish which would have been super cool if they also had their the pencil number on there but that's a bit too much to ask so earth green yellowish there we go so here we've got earth green yellowish so it's the same colors um, as the polychromos pencils so that is so cool. So now the, these blues, because these blues can be quite confusing. So we got in Dantrine blue, we've got dark indigo, which we already have. Um, so I can go, I can actually go a fair bit darker on those blues. Uh, you got the different shades of yellows. 
you've got the petals would be a great one to use this because when you're doing white petals it can be quite confusing knowing how dark or how light you should go and if you should go with warm grays or cool grays or yellows or browns so this is such a super super cool way to find your colors now the last time we checked those that have android phones so i got iphone but the last time we checked they android doesn't have that app which really really sucks but maybe they do now but if enough of you can get onto the Audi app and tell them they need to make one for android then it'd be really cool because i mean that that's such a simple way to find colors and you don't have to worry about spending all those hours making your swatches and stuff Okay, so what was I doing? Okay, so I was using my cadmium yellow number 107 and that is very, very bright. I need to create my darker values first. So I think I shall use, use, use. Let's use the burnt ochre number 187. Mm. Camera check, thanks Esme. <laughs> cool so i want to just create those shadows that are in between those um the the center part of the flower what do you call that Hey, I wonder if you guys knew so because of the new curriculum that I'm starting I've, I've been doing a lot of research on paper and stuff what paper is made out of and all that sort of stuff so I did one on watercolor paper and um, it was I always sort of wondered how the paper sticks together because I sort of always knew that paper is made out of wood pulp is what I thought it's made out of wood pulp or some sort of plant fibers and then it's mushed together and then it's pressed and like that's all I really knew I didn't know the details about creating paper but watercolor paper is like this one for example is made out of 100% cotton so cotton fibers and then it's um, Yeah, so it's made out of cotton fibers, which is the plant fibers. And the way to think of it, the way it sort of mushes together, I don't know if any of you have like seen it. You know when you like puree fruit, for example, let's say you puree a bunch of mangoes and you pour it in your dehydrator just on a sheet and then it dries and you make the fruit roll ups. So it, it takes all the water out of it. And, but then it sticks together so perfectly that it looks like a sheet of paper and then because it's I'm sure it, like because you put it on such a flat sheet of paper you it looks completely smooth you don't see any texture or anything so I was like oh, okay well that makes sense so if they take cotton fibers or plant fibers why would it react differently to what the fruit does so they it sticks together so well and then it's pressed really flat and then the hot pressed papers are pressed with a hot cylinder which makes it very smooth like this. So this is a hot pressed paper. Whereas the cold pressed paper is pressed with a cold cylinder and they have a lot of texture. The, cylinder, it, the paper has a lot of texture because it's, I guess the heat doesn't make it that smooth. So the, the, the cold pressed watercolor papers are a lot more coarse than what the hot pressed watercolor papers are. And then I was always wondering, well, how does it not break apart and tear apart? And that is because of how it is pressed I guess and like how the the water is taken out of it but then that also makes total sense as to why it can hold so much water doesn't it just make sense so you can dehydrate fruit and then you can rehydrate fruit with water so it makes sense that you can do the same with paper yeah <laughs> that that's what was going through my mind <laughs> So I was wondering how it keeps together. Oh, and cotton, cotton fibers. 
um, are already pH neutral so they are non-acidic so you'll find a lot of papers they say acid free and that means that it's pH neutral so that's pH neutral 7 so it's got no acid and that means the reason why you want acid free paper is because it will last a lot longer and it's it won't yellow very quickly now if you have archival paper it's even better because archival paper is alkaline so alkaline means that it's seven plus or eight plus on the ph scale um, and those papers don't yellow so like those papers will have a hundred plus years lifespan before they start yellowing and acid-free paper tends to go about 60 to 80 years in life before it starts yellowing and then papers with acid in um, like the papers that have that are not acid free are those that like have cotton fibers or synthetic plant fibers and wood pulp so wood pulp is not acid free so those papers are more prone to break down a lot quicker and the wood pulp that they used to use in the very old days uh, or what they used in the old days was wood pulp and that was the reason why the books were crumbling and falling apart because it wasn't acid free and it wouldn't last very long so it would break down whereas with the acid free or alkaline papers um, they last a lot longer and they're a lot stronger a lot more durable so how cool is that for a fun fact <laughs> so yeah when i look at watercolor paper i think of fruit roll-ups <laughs> oh whoa iggy thank you for that you did not have to do that <laughs> Uh, Camel Kern is saying your gap is bigger than Lisa's. Well, I don't know. Mine's taller, but probably about the same. <laughs> Gloria says thanks for the paper explanation. I know it's pretty cool, isn't it? You don't you don't think about these things, or you do, but then you we don't always get the time to sort of figure out how it works or why it works that way. See, I got so little drawing done during that talking. I cannot s explain something properly and draw at the same time. <laughs> it's it's hard. Okay. So. Don't be lazy like me. Sharpen your pencils. I'm just using this pencil to create sort of shapes just to indicate that there are round little bits in the center of the water lily. This is where value is more important than detail. So if you can have your dark values, your medium tone values and your highlights done properly, then the detailing almost comes easy. the cadmium yellow again what's the time ah i've only got a half an hour left to go okay that's all right let's take advantage of the watercolor pencils and make this look like a watercolor painting 
So I'm going to be a little bit more free with this than what I usually am. And it's good to do that sometimes. So let's... I'm gonna use a cool a cool gray for this. So let's use cold gray three number two Made chocolate would be good. Me too, chocolate person. Terry's asking is there a big difference using in using mixed media paper versus watercolor papers? Um, yes, there's a difference in all the papers. So it's sort of you have to try it. You've, you've got to experiment with them and know what they can do and what materials are best to use on them for you to know what paper is going to be the best for you. Um, watercolor, watercolor paper is not necessarily rougher um, the cold pressed papers are more coarse yes but the hot pressed papers are smooth like this paper is really smooth I mean, you you barely see the diff the texture at all I think I'm just gonna make that like that Okay, so again, I just want to get the values. Oh, they're going a bit too dark there. I just want to create the shadows of the petals. Starting to build up a little. Uh, so the audio app still doesn't work on Android. That sucks. Gonna have to get onto the creators.
Thanks, DJ. <laughs> Thanks, Esme. It is so windy outside. The poor dogs this morning we woke up and their dog kennel like flew across the garden. The whole kennel. Lucky they were inside. They sleep inside. Hey guys, yeah, I'm sorry about the the connect. I, I think the weather's got something to do with it. The connection's not all that great. So it does have those buffering things happening. I'm sorry, that's so totally out of my control. It shouldn't, once you watch the stream after, um, it, that shouldn't happen. Blocking the rest using ivory. So ivory number 103, I'm just gonna fill it in because it's not white. It does have that ivory tinge to it. I'm not even careful about it. Okay. Now we'll use some of the earth green yellowish number 168. That's what we picked with the app. Create some other little shadowy areas. I love this music. Do the same here. Okay, indigo blue. I'm gonna add a light layer of the indigo blue all the way over here. Because the Audi app said that that's what was here. And like this color here is actually perfect for the highlight. So we can go super dark over here, still with the same color. So with the shadows, I'm going to press a little bit harder to make them a bit darker.
See, so building up the value starts adding more and more as you keep going. You're like, oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. It's getting better. So I am pressing a bit harder, but not hard enough to destroy the tooth of the paper. <laughs> You're so sweet. And Robin just refreshed my wine. <laughs> yeah, see that that'd be pretty good. But it's too early. I think you'd be worried if I was refreshing my wine right now. It's quarter past ten in the morning. <laughs> DJ is asking, I'm using the Dark Indigo number 157. darker over here.
the bit of the indanthrene blue. Where are you? Here we go. Number. Hey, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> so, indanthrene blue, number 247. Thank you so much. Albrecht Dura Magnus watercolor pencils. Ooh, what are they? Oh yeah, DJ, I'm using, now I'm using in Dancing Blue number 247. Before I was using the Indigo Blue. Nice big chunky pencils. Oh, I have to have a look. I'm pretty sure I own all of Faber Castell's stuff. Everything. Their pit pens, their pastel pencils, polychromos are the ones I use the most. The watercolor pencils. It's nice though, they're a brand that I trust, so I feel comfortable buying any of their supplies because I've I've used so many and everything's been good. And the reviews and stuff on their pencils are always good too. And I've never had any issues with breakage or anything like that. And their color range is amazing too. I think that's also one of the main things I really like them is because of their color range. Not so many other pencils like the Caran Dash pencils, they're great, but they're t way too expensive for one, and also their color range is just too limited. <laughs> so the Magnus has a 5.3 millimeter lead and a very soft and vibrant color layer. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> You're welcome. That's true. Yeah, how would you sharpen them if they're so big? Would you have to use a blade? Okay, dokie. Let's add some of this blue in here. some in here. The color is starting to look quite nice and I still haven't started any detailing. So like detailing as in the veins in the lily pads or the you know more details in the center of the water lily. So those things I haven't even gotten to yet. Mm. I'm going to use some of the pine green number 267 and just like sort of create the, the lily pads have a sort of pizza shape looking thing happening there. Double hole metal sharpener that works with the Magnus pencils. That sounds good. Uh, I'm so sorry about the buffering, guys. It's driving me in crazy, too. Driving me in crazy. Yep. Speaks for itself.
10. Um, I'm going to take a bit of the Dark Naples Ochre 184 and I want to add that in, in here. Just a light layer. Uh, DJ's asking, what color is the paper? It's white, but it's not white. It sort of looks a bit ivory. But yeah, it says traditional white on the paper. Oh, see that? Yellow made all the difference in there. Now I want to use some... No, more of a red tone, I think. This one. We'll use some of the Van Dyke Brown, number 176. And just a little bit in the water here. Just on that, that edge of that shadow. And even a bit here. Okay, let's water this up. Uh, I'm going to use this Arteza brush pen and let's do the flower first. so soft don't get too much yellow on there What's the time? Ah, five more minutes. Oh dear. So now, so when you go over an area like that, you can just brush it off. So, you know, try and dry your brush off as much as possible. And if you overdo an area, you can just lift it back off again. I probably shouldn't be doing this area here because it's just going to bleed into the petals that are still wet. Shall be not very smart.
DJ's asking who won the April challenge. Uh, it hasn't been announced yet. I think only on the 10th. The 10th of May, the April challenge winners will be announced. But if you're on Patreon, you can follow Color Pencil Magazine on Patreon. You don't have to be subscribed to them to follow them. You can still see all the news and stuff. And then they usually um, put the winners up there along with their, their pictures and some other stuff too. I'm just gonna use a very wet brush. Let's see what happens. Very wet brush. That's a bit too wet. <laughs> well, that looks that looks really cool, actually. Let's let's go beyond wet. Let's go crazy. Just be very careful around the petals. too far there. It's okay. Can make this one smaller. I actually really like how that looks. Okay, let's do the green. Uh, maybe not yet. Uh, we can. 
I won't use as much water as what I did in the in the water. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to finish adding water to the green lily pads and then that's going to have to be it for today's stream. And I'm so sorry about the connection. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. The weather is really bad. It's super windy and there are some serious clouds out there. So I think there's a storm. There was a huge storm last night. So I'm guessing that's what it is affecting the internet <laughs> and we live out in a small little country town in the middle of nowhere <laughs> but generally it's pretty okay So to finish this off, I will either do another live stream or I will record it and then put the video, the real time video up later. So it just depends on how things go because I'm so busy with my new curriculum now for my students that um, that's sort of taking priority. But I'll see, maybe I'll get to do part two for this live. Actually, I don't want to do any more to the water. I like it just the way it is. Okay. So, but yeah, there will be some sort of other video um, to finish this off. I won't just leave it like this. I will finish it. Okay. But for now, oh, I forgot to like record the last, I don't know, 20 minutes. All right. I want to thank Color Pencil Magazine for being on today. It was so nice talking to you. And for Faber Castell for saying hello. It was so great to have you guys. And for everybody else, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. I love your support and I love your enthusiasm. And I really love what you guys have to say in the chat. And your questions were super great today. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I really hope that next time I do a, lag, the, a live that the lag won't be so bad. But um, yeah, so thanks guys and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>